And we're back, and in this video we're going to be going over the general topology uh, and the layout and basically the rundown of what you'll be clicking around in in uh, Ozone 5. So for Ozone 5 Advanced, you have of course Ozone 5 and then you have each of its modules kind of separated into its own uh, VST window. This offers a bit more flexibility. Um, and yeah, basically this is the main window you'll be working in. Uh, and this is basically yeah all of the modules uh, and if you want you can just drop in say a dynamics processor and move that around in your DAW this offers again more flexibility so with that being said we have uh, all of our modules and they kind of go in through this uh, plug-in chain and you click graph I don't know why it's called graph but it's basically called graph and this is uh, your plug-in chain so we have our EQ1 uh, which is our first EQ, which is here. It's not actually called EQ1. Uh, it's equalizer and then post EQ. So EQ2 is called post EQ. So it could get a little confusing, but not really. You can figure it out. Uh, so we have our EQ going into our reverb, going into our, uh, our multiband processing kind of thing, uh, which is our dynamics processor, our exciter, and our imager, which is... Uh, imaging dynamics and uh, harmonic exciter it's all right here which is super fun uh, they all have a shared crossover and what does a crossover mean it's basically well it splits it up into bands kind of like in EQ uh, and these all have the shared crossover so the crossover here will have the same crossover oops what are you doing reset are you tripping Yeah, you can have them all. Yeah, you can just move them back in there and they have a shared crossover. So moving it here, I didn't know I did that. Moving uh, this crossover here reflects on this one. Moving this uh, reflects to this one. And I didn't know if you had the graph window open, the crossover will change. That's weird. Anyway, it's all good. Um, I'm sure they're aware of it. So, uh, yeah, this it just it's a it's an option to offer more flexibility uh, for your crossover and all of your multiband uh, dynamics. Um, so yeah, I generally leave that uh, if you're starting out, but it's just a matter of having more flexibility. Uh, and then you know we go into our special you know maximizer and our phase uh, meter, which is in here, and uh, our spectrum and our EQ and the the, the final EQ. Uh, is at the end here. Uh, one thing I want to stress is for your the EQ at the start of your chain, I would suggest uh, having it s set to analog, just for adding color and you know all that fun stuff and doing your ro your roll off and da 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 da. Uh, and for your post EQ, I would have it digital because you don't want to add color after your maximizer because if you look at the graph, there's the maximizer and then the EQ at the end, right? So, uh, basically, that is the general layout. Uh, you select uh, your uh, modules. I'll call these modules by clicking on this button here. So you can easily go to Reverb, back to EQ. They're all off, and they have this little button here. Click. So this turns it on, and when it's off, it's uh, kind of fuzzed out or blurry or whatever. Uh, so you can turn them on or off, and... Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, you have your standard EQ options, um, but with a bit more speciality. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, analog and digital modes. Don't worry about your digital mode options here. Uh, you can go surgical mode, which is extreme cut um, for, you know, special applications. Uh, we'll stick to analog because we're, we're going to be sticking to analog for our pre-EQ at the beginning of our chain. Again, this is at the beginning of our chain. And uh, yeah, we have um, these selected by default. You turn your bands on and off by actually clicking on them. So right now we have band one selected and it's a low shelf and it's at 30 hertz. So we can bring that down. We can adjust the Q. We can uh, select different kinds. So generally I'll want to do uh, a high pass. We can do go flat and this is an an analog style roll off which is something that I suggest you do um, what it does is it kind of cleans up the muddiness uh, between 20 and 30 hertz or below 30 hertz sometimes it goes a little bit below uh, and this uh, will clean up 
uh, you know, it, it'll give you more headroom, and it's generally something that you won't really listen to. Most clubs don't, most clubs and like woofers and stuff like that, they don't go uh, down to 20 hertz, even though CD quality is 20 to 20K. Uh, generally, um, the the woofers are set to like 30 hertz or something like that. Unless, of course, you're using like a function one sound system, but that's all speculatory. So that's like the first thing that I would do without even basically looking. Uh, so yeah, we'll just uh, play our track now. Right, that's, uh, you know, super fun. Um, and I'll just use this as an example. So uh, next up, we can select up to eight bands. Um, but if you run out of uh, your EQ, you can always add uh, another EQ like beforehand, so you, you're unlimited to the amount of uh, you know flexibility you want to add. Uh, we have bell curves, which are pretty cool. Um, this is for kind of finding those uh, those frequencies, and this is an analog mode, so there's like non-linearities, and it adds color, and it's a lot more pleasant compared to digital. <laughs> You'll notice that the, the EQ kind of shapes changed, which is, you know, all right. All right, so we have, uh, you know, we'll just do like a little cut here at a problem frequency that I'm hearing. Uh, we'll add another one. These are all bell. We'll add a bit of punchiness around here. Because this is like a big room trance sound, we're going for that. Uh, and uh, usually for this high shelf, I will kind of uh, give it like a flat kind of roll off. Nothing too extreme. Just to kind of clean up that hissiness that might be, you know, a little unpleasant, if that makes any sense. Uh, generally, yeah, if you hear like a white noise, if you're at like a club and you hear like a white noise, it goes and it just makes your ears set on fire. Um, yeah, basically, uh, that is our EQ section and then our, our first EQ section. Right. Um, snapshots, uh, kind of, yeah, that, that doesn't really, you know, work for me. Um, you can, you know, use a guide. You know, the, the famous, like, pink noise guide, but I don't really do that. Um, and it just kind of follows the EQ shape. Uh, but, you know, not really good. And matching, you can take a picture of another song or another track and then apply it, your EQ curve from uh, the track you're working on. You take two snapshots and it'll match them. Uh, I've tried that at least ten times and it hasn't sounded all that great. Um, maybe someone else has found, you know, uh, success in that, but uh, not me. Um, yeah, so yeah, we'll go to our, our next post EQ. We're going to be doing this a bunch um, in our other tracks, but I just want to give you an example. I just want to focus on the EQ. So we have uh, our post EQ, which again is at the end of the chain, just to kind of show you we're using a digital um, kind of, you know, uh, EQ simply because it doesn't add any harmonics. It doesn't like it doesn't uh, you don't want to add things after the maximizer that would potentially raise the volume, but raising the volume could add a few things that won't be good. So uh, we'll do a low pass, which is you know like a low pass filter. We'll be using we'll be using a brick wall, and this is an extreme cut. In a lot of tracks, you'll see this, it'll go up, and then it'll just be like completely cut off around 8K or 18K. Uh, I'm an old guy. Well, not really old, but my ears can't really hear that sweep. But what this is doing is this is cutting an extreme surgical cut because we're in the digital domain now. It's cutting all that high end that doesn't really matter all that much and that a lot of people can't really hear. You can do the same thing uh, here as well. So we'll go high pass brick wall, which isn't quite a brick wall. And it's it, it prevents, because if you have like a super, a super cut, especially in the low frequencies, you get like uh, artifacts and stuff like that. So naturally 
automatically, I should say. It's a nice roll off. But as you get up, it turns more into, you know, a brick wall cut around here. You can hear its brick wallness. Yeah, and this is always a good idea. Just set it, you know, around 30, 31. And this cleans up headroom. It's just another layer of redundancy uh, for muddiness and headroom in your track. And uh, that's basically our EQ area. Um, again, the, the, the tip is analog first to add color and uh, balance everything out. But, you know, do it in a, in a harmonically pleasing way. And the post EQ, uh, go digital because digital has, you know, has some awesomeness. It has some awesome possum. Um, another thing you can do um, that we'll be doing a lot is continuing with the the uh, the topology is uh, the bypass button. You can just bypass everything. So you really can't hear a difference, but what we kind of did is uh, we cleaned a few things up uh, that'll you know, help us in the long run. All right, uh, I'll be back with more ramblings, and uh, we'll get mastering in a fun way. All right, take care.